people. That's a really listen to feedback unless it's really drastic, like the Baguindanao massacre, where it will go up in space. So I said, for 40 years I've been outside trying to shape government policies. Even have been consultants to a number of presidents, senators, Congress people, cabinet members, even argued for the Philippine government at the UN, but from the outside, not as a, a, an official. When I saw that the political space had actually collapsed and it was threatening the very soul of our nation, basically the corruption, the, the collapse of morality, I said, I think this has to stop. That's when I seriously considered running. And for me, this occurred, as I mentioned last time, in a flight to Europe, when it became very clear in 2008 that the system of the Philippines is not changed. It can no longer be piecemeal if the system as a whole has to be changed. And if that doesn't happen, this country will actually go deeper and collapse further from its present position. And as a Filipino loving this country, I, I could not allow that to happen without me stepping forward and taking a chance. So that was the, uh, it's been a long time, but I always stayed outside in civil society, in cultural life, trying to influence from the outside. But since there was no more conscience or capacity to listen, that's the time I decided to move in and challenge the system. And I think, uh, for me, I'm, I'm really excited because the first manifestation of that is the forming of itself as a system. Because that was the first hurdle uh, in the whole system, the very participation being temporarily disqualified because the system thought politics in a certain way. But this is exactly the kind of traditional politics that has been destroying this country. So I think the, the Commonwealth victory has many ramifications. In fact, I'm writing a blog about it in the next few days. So I'm just trying to draw out uh, what the two paragraphs of the Commonwealth meant, the decision to reinstate it, because it says volumes about the possibility of a very different politics in this country. So the Commonwealth also has something to do with your being. As of today, number seven, most searched Filipino yeah, I think that's the, in fact, uh, when Formelec decided to disqualify us, we did not feel the, uh, I mean, we did not go into a crisis because we felt, okay, Formelec made a real mistake. This is going to actually uh, bounce back to them. And, and sure enough, uh, the disqualification actually strengthened my candidacy. Uh, during the period of one month, that we were no longer considered as a presidential candidate, a lot of people actually came in and supported. Uh, you know, there, there's this phenomenon, I think, uh, it was pointed out by Jane, I think. Uh, even those who do not support me or, or are for another candidate, they were very much pissed off by the prominent position because they couldn't stomach the concept that only money will determine whether somebody is qualified or not that really goes against the grain of our Republican government, our Republican Constitution, res publica, the, re the Republic of the people, and democracy, which is the power of the people, of the citizens. So a lot of people actually were, were angry at the common position, and one manifestation of this, but also globally, uh, over 2,000 people from over 60 countries also protested the common decision that also had an impact because some of them were pretty prominent and including the whole Green Party of France, a senator from Australia, Bob Brown, who was the leader of the Green, the Green Movement in France. I mean, very prominent people started writing the formula I mean, questioning the decision. So I think it did a lot of good, although of course uh, you, we were totally prepared to go to the Supreme Court to challenge it. And uh, so now, we not only won for myself, but we actually created a precedent for new politics and a different kind of political possibility in this country. So do you think the other candidates are not threatened? Uh, I, I would think so, uh, because now, a lot of the 
a lot of the other candidates are saying that they're the bearer of new politics. But now because of the formal decision and the way it was carried in media and the internet, that for me this was a fight for new politics. That label, which I actually created several months ago, is actually more connected, becoming more connected to me. Yes. Before you ask a question, can you just move nearer to the camera because you cannot be heard? Uh, you're, you're off, offline. Are you offline? Uh, but that connection is still there. Are you Ah, okay. Are you you just throw your question near the mic so that you can be heard by the online Can you please tell us more about Pangmasa and are you really joining forces with them? No, actually, Pangmasa was a political party that I tried to help organize a national political party, not a party list, but a national political party that I tried to get accredited with Pangmasa. You are credited now? Uh, no, actually, uh, at the same time I was disqualified, uh, Pangmasa was also not accredited. So, how will you No, but the interesting thing is that what I mentioned to Komilek was that uh, while we were accrediting uh, Pangmasa, the Partido ng Marangan na sa Bayanan, we had close to about 700 coordinators that were there. And so I was telling Komilek, even though your own definition of an independent candidate does not require a person to have a political party to run for office, I cited back an earlier public resolution, we do have grassroots support from many parts of the country. We have municipal coordinators, provincial, regional coordinators, constituting a de facto organization. It's still alive, it's still there, and actually more are joining. Now, one of the interesting things in connection with this is that after the Comelec uh, reinstatement, a lot of independent candidates and parties, and parties are now approaching us looking for an alliance because these independent candidates are now beginning to see that they felt that they were similar to my case, that they really wanted to bring new politics without the usual ingredients of a lot of money, a lot of uh, traditional political organizing and so on. So we are actually creating new politics from scratch on the on the goal, just totally just totally driven by a vision of how a very different kind of political organizing can work. Because I think the Filipinos are also at the point, as a whole, they really sick and tired of a traditional political system that's given them nothing but problems for the last 40, 50, 60 years. You're watching Nicanor Perlas live streaming if you are uh, watching us right now. There was a request from Dubai to please put the name of the candidate. <laughs> okay. So I'm repeating this. Nicanor Perlas, Nick Perlas, running for presidential candidate. So Thank you. We can move on to the next question. We, can, uh, we have Ricky Rivera, who is part of Blog Watch. Uh, you have a question, Ricky? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, can you move here, uh, over here first, so that we could be heard by the online audience? No, just at least you just stand up and just be heard. It's question. over here. The mic is over here. In this it's a <laughs> Just throw your voice over there. Okay, uh, about three questions. Okay. okay, that's fine. Yes. Online, I oh, actually wrote something about you as the Krishna Mabuba, uh, okay. Filipino boy. Okay. 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 And, in, in, and in some uh, websites, because I'm, I'm trying to discern, I'm trying to study your platform going. Okay. Uh, sir, in, in, in one. What's really your platform of government? Because it's really... I'm, my colleagues are quite confused as to... Uh, for you, what would be the uh, the main problem? If, you, if, if God would probably, or if the Philippines...